Hey, it's party time, Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show here. You know where we are, the mothership, which is Studio 22, the new Improve Bigger, Better, Better. Studio 22. Take a look at Mark and Candace. Look at Mark right there. I want to see if you guys notice when the puppet master is sitting over there in the control room driving this ship and Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians, looking so lovely. I want you guys to look at just kind of the fodder over their shoulders there, some remnants of the old Studio 22. There is the old Chad Brather Show logo case with some of the deer antlers. and the. You guys never saw this actually on camera when you were watching the podcast, but you see that little light that's going around? That's one of those little old Starsky and Hutch kind of lights. You know, they were driving in the sports car, and every time they got in a hot pursuit, they had to stick their siren up on top of the thing there. That's what, that's what stood outside of the hallway whenever we were in studio, just to let all of those crazy, rowdy Mercury Radio people know that we were in there doing serious business. But just past the light, I want all of you fans of the podcast to look. Now, if you're listening to this, I'm going to describe it for you. There is... A being there that we call Herbert the Silent Deer. Look at him. Look at Herbert. He made the trek across the road successfully. Now, the first time he tried that, he died. That's why Herbert is still wearing that look of shock. He still looks the same as the day he got hit by that truck. So welcome, Herbert the Silent Deer. Puppet Master Mark, how you feeling, buddy? I'm feeling great. It's Give me to be, your uh... honest opinion about this new studio. I love it. I love it. I think it's beautiful. So uh, everyone who worked on it did a great job. So uh, Chance cut the lighting. Sean built a bunch of stuff. So I think it looks real, real good. Yeah. I'm happy to make your jobs easier, guys. And that's why I try to be a professional and just good at what I do on camera and on microphone. And I want everybody to reward our hard work. I really do. I want you to show your appreciation to the new mothership, which is Studio 22. I want you to show your appreciation to Mark and Candace, to me. Because we deserve it, and we say that in all humility. By going and leaving us a five-star rating and a review wherever podcasts are offered. And when you're done watching this thing on YouTube or wherever it may be, uh, go listen to it as well. Let's let it play in the background. You can say, hey, Alexa, play the Chad Prather Show. Hey, Google, play the Chad Prather Show. You can say, hey, Google, my husband's beating me up, and the cops will be there in 15 minutes. I don't know how any of that stuff works. I just know Big Brother is watching. And I want we got a big show for you today. I want to I got a I got a special guest who snuck in here and throw it over there to the hot seat. Look at this, Sarah Gonzalez, the news and why it matters. Now, Hello. you can look you can look directly at that camera if you need to and pretend like you're looking at me. Okay. Because the we'll angle like a, a news correspondent yeah. type thing. Okay. What did you think um what do you think of the studio? You I, tell us. Now you tell us how amazing you think the studio is. Oh, I do love it. I love it. Now, I will say it is freezing cold. Uh, I'm wearing a jean jacket, and I am also still really cold. But I think it's gorgeous. I think Tim did a great job with this picture that he actually took. Yeah. I had no idea. I was in here talking with him, and he said, no, I actually legit like took this picture at just the right angle that it looks like we're sitting. Downtown up, Fort Worth, yeah, upstairs. upstairs. Yeah, upstairs. On a patio in downtown Fort Worth. Yeah, give them a wide shot of that thing, Mark. I know I I'm not sitting over there in the deal. Look at that. It's so cool. I think the attention to detail is just, yeah. it's amazing. I don't have an eye for this kind of stuff at all. Like, I come in here and I'm like, well, how'd you think of that? Zuby is coming on the show today. He came all the way across from Great Britain. If you're not following, at Zuby, that's Z-U-B-Y, Zuby Music on Twitter. You got to find this guy. ZubyMusic.com is his website. and You can find out all about him. He's going to tell you a very interesting story as a conservative man from the UK and something he did that made himself go completely viral. And you want to, Sarah, you want to talk about catching backlash for what he did by identifying as a woman. Oh, my word. I thought you were allowed to do that. Yeah. I thought you were allowed to change your mind on a day to day basis. That's why I said this is an episode of The View. <laughs> this is a this is a women well, I don't know how you're gonna identify. We already know how Party Fell Stay identifies. Tuned. He's all things to all people. <laughs> so rock and roll, man. We're gonna get into this conversation with the crew of Studio Twenty Two. You're gonna enjoy this. Hang tight for our fun little conversation with my good buddy Zuby. Love y'all. Party time mom. <laughs> I am excited. I'm always excited, though, 
Sarah Gonzalez, host of the News and Why It Matters, sitting over in the Party Foul Pub. You're you're researching, aren't you? I am. You're looking stuff up. You're getting ready for the News and Why It Matters. I'm always prepping. Oh. <laughs> always prepping. Are you a prepper? Like I'm, I was, I've been thinking about that here lately, like putting up food or like storing this stuff, this food in a bag that'll last like 25 years. Granted, climate change is going to kill us all in 10 or 11. It's true. Right? But, it's true. I mean, I, I do believe in having maybe a week or two worth of some sort of emergency food. I think that's smart. Now, me, I... I, I don't have like a basement full of toilet paper. I prep with bullets because then I'm going <laughs> to yeah. go kill the person that saved all the food. Right, and take all that. So you're killing me is what you're saying. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Party foul? I know um, what's going to happen with party foul. He's just going to come to my house. I, I, I do. I uh, prep with water. I have lots of water at my house, probably more than I could use in a year, but I'm prepared. Do you really? Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot of water. Yeah. No. He I've drinks a lot of water. 15 cases that is stored. So. That's crazy. I'm going to take a soda stream over to his house, and we're going to make some Dr. <laughs> Prepper. Oh, there you go, Doctor Prepper. How did how do they make that toilet liquor in the in the jail, in the prisons? Don't they don't they start with like spit? Yeah, they start with spit and get some yeast out of that. Yeah. Candace, Anything I'm gonna need to you to look that up. We're gonna make we're gonna do that on the show one time. We're gonna make toilet liquor, prison liquor. I'm afraid this is where I'm gonna have to veto that idea. No, we're gonna do it. We're gonna pull a toilet out here, and we're gonna pretend we're all in prison, and. Uh, I'll write it down. I'll add it to the list of ideas. She'll be sure to do that. Enough waste of time. My buddy Zuby's in the house all the way from across the pond. He came in from the UK. Man, welcome to Texas. Thank you very much. First time here. How long long have you been in Texas now? You've been here for a minute. I've been here for a week. I was just in Austin, and I just got to Dallas yesterday. Yeah. Zuby is the ultimate troll in the move that he made, and we're going to talk about that in a second, because I'm telling you something, if you're watching and listening to this, and you want to talk about having some cojones, I mean, just having the the guts, the balls, the <laughs> all the good stuff to do this, what he did is amazing, and I'm going to get to that in a second, but it's funny because coming from the UK, you guys have your own political issues going on over there with Brexit and the, you know, um, gun rights issues and stabbings and no go i mean what is the climate in the uk right now because you're not from london i'm not yeah i mean i you know people don't believe that anything outside of london (laughs) exists right yeah no i'm not from london i did live in london for three years though um in terms of my background i actually grew up in the middle east in Mm -hmm. saudi arabia uh with a lot of americans canadians british people people from all over the world hence why i don't really have a british accent yeah um but in terms of the political climate in the uk it's kind of like here in that if you were to go outside and live in the normal world and walk around and go to places you wouldn't really feel or sense that anything was weird or anything was yeah. tense but then if you jump on twitter or you're watching the news or something it seems like people are at each other's throats all the time and nobody can yeah so you know like people are on the brink of some kind of civil war and you know i think there's a there's truth in both. I think for the most part, things tend to get grossly exaggerated by both mainstream media and social media. Whereas in the real life, most people generally kind of just want to get on with things and look after themselves and their family. But um, if you spend too much time on those things, you can easily get the picture that stuff is way, way, way more out yeah. of hand than it might be. Back in June, I was in Ireland for a week. I'm going back in November, and when you go over there and you're hanging out in the pub and, and the folks strike up a conversation, everybody's they think we're at each other's throats. Oh, yeah. Like You're on the brink of civil war. Yeah. It's the end of the world in America. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there were people who seriously were suggesting to me that I don't come to the U.S. while Trump is president. <laughs> right. No, seriously. There are, some, some people were saying, are you, are you, you know, yeah. and, and not even just that, but also the some of the mass shootings and stuff like that. Yeah. People like, you know, man, like, those cities you're going to, man, be be careful, be careful. And then, you know, same with people from the U.S. going over to London. I've had people say, yeah, you know, I was thinking of going to London, but I heard that the police are arresting people for making jokes or people are, like, stabbing each other in the street or whatever. So I think that in the U.K., people think you come to Texas and, you know, everyone's kind of got an AR-15 on their, you know, people having shootouts just yeah. in the mall and everything. Well, and that then, part's true. We all do carry an AR-15. Yeah, at all times. <laughs> and then uh, in the in the UK, some Americans have this idea that people are just there with like knives and swords in the street, just you mm-hmm. know, sort of fighting to the death. And 
that's not really what you'll see. Yeah, I remind have. people that you go into a restaurant, you don't just start picking out people's politics and arguing and debating, but we do that online. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you're a guy who has your hands in a lot of things, musician, rapper, entrepreneur. You, you're kind of like me, an armchair philosopher. And <laughs> I mean, you graduated Oxford, which is, is something to be said. And, you know, you got uh, uh, your social media content creator and you're just a hustler. That's what I call myself. I yeah. just I'm into everything. So you see it from all walks of life. And, I certainly try to. Yeah. And that's the thing. You came over here and your Twitter, which has blown up huge lately at Zuby Music. Go follow him. I mean, that thing went from like 10, 12,000, like 150,000 fast. Yeah, it's growing really quickly. And I know what people will say. They'll say, well, why? how did he grow it? We're going to tell you that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to tell you that in a minute. But you made a pretty good observation when you came over here and you were observing because you thought, you know, again, this is Trump's America. What did you expect to see? A couple of MAGA hats or T-shirts or mm -hmm. signs or something. I've seen two bumper stickers. and that's it, which I, I'm frankly, I'm a little bit disappointed, but um, <laughs> I've seen I've seen more uh, Beto, Bernie and Warren yeah. signs and merchandise in public than I've seen uh, anything pro Trump, even now that I'm here in Texas. So I thought, OK, I'm in California for three weeks. I'm, I'm not really expecting to see it here. Yeah. I saw the one bumper sticker there. And then uh, actually, when I was driving here yesterday, there was um, funnily enough, both cars have seen them on were the same vehicle. Both of them were Ford F-150s. And I saw one, I was behind one yesterday and it had the Trump 2020. Yeah. Can, can I just tell you, I, even in Texas, we're scared to wear the, the MAGA hats. <laughs> I have one. I will only wear it in the airport when I'm traveling, not with my family, because I'm worried about what someone is going to say to me. And the airport is the only place I'm like, I'm traveling. At least, I mean, I, it's supposed to be secure here. Mm. People know they'll get thrown off of a flight if they start something. So I guess I'm safe to wear my red hat here. Safe but I, even in Texas, that, that's why you Tell don't see Disney it. Tell your Disney World scared. story. Why you didn't wear it there. Disneyland. Where did you go? Disney World? Disneyland. Yeah. In L.A. And everyone was, so, I mean, I wore a shirt that said, make America fit again. Okay. It, well, that's nothing to do with Donald Trump. It's from a, a nutrition, you know, supplement company mm. that uh, that I like, and I got the dirtiest looks. People were, <laughs> I mean, they're so mean to you when they think that you're associating yourself with Donald Trump. It's just terrifying. Yeah. It's and terrifying. one of the things you thought was you didn't want your son was with you. You yes. didn't want to have to defend yourself. Or have yes. something vitriolic said. Right. That's why. And I, I, I legitimately, we're leaving in the morning. It's early. I'm like, I don't want to do my hair. I just want to, you know what? I want to wear this hat. And I had to get onto myself because I said, no, I can't wear the hat because my son is with me. Mm -hmm. And who knows what? Pe I mean, there are people punching other people in the face for mm -hmm. wearing a MAGA hat. So what is someone going to do or say to me that my son is going to hear or see and I can't undo that. And so I think that, you know, people are just really scared. Uh, and then am I a coward for not doing it? Yeah. I feel like I was protecting yeah. my son. Chicken. I, feel, I mean, it's like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like I was protecting my son in that moment. But then I was kicking myself because I said, no, that's letting them win. That's giving them what they yeah, want. But it's, it's, there's also an element of wisdom in there. My mother keeps a, she's in the state of Georgia. So she keeps a Trump sticker from all the way back in 2016 on the back of hers. And I'm like, mom. You're asking for it. I mean, you know that you're asking for it. And so if you get your car keyed or something like that. And I do have a friend who's had guns pulled on him on the interstate while he's driving down the highway because he's got Trump stickers on the back of his truck. Wow. And people pull out their guns and stuff like that. That's nuts. That's nuts. I mean, that's it's also it's, ironic. You know, that's, that's, it is that, ironic, that's isn't it? That's crazy, man. That's the, um, the level of tolerance and, and love. I'm shocked. Yeah. And so it's, well, the American left is not tolerant. Uh, the extremes on either side are not of course they're tolerant. Right. Yeah. Intolerance is a is a myth in in a big way, mm. you know. But I I recently created some merchandise shirts. One says um, uh, Trump twenty twenty. It's a good looking shirt. Simple. People said, well, I want to buy it, but I can't wear it because I'm afraid of what would happen. And I'm like, well, I wish somebody would, you know. But <laughs> and, and then that's just me writing checks with my mouth. I can't cash with my body. But <laughs> I will say though that my last trip that I took, I was flying to Arizona and I did wear, I wore the make America great again. And it was, it said my body, my body, my hat choice at the bottom. Yeah. And I wore that and I did get a lot of dirty looks, but I got way more people who in secret, they were passing me and they, they said, I like that. Yeah. They gave me the thumbs up, but they would only whisper it or give yeah. me a, a nonverbal cue that they appreciated it because they were they're too scared to do it. Did you make sure it was the thumbs up, not the okay sign? 
there were no okay signs given to me. That's good. But no they knew okay my last name signs, was Gonzalez, yeah. so yeah. they didn't. You know it. the okay sign thing, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. Of course, it's so. It's it's amazing to me how people who are just coming out there and arbitrarily coming up with these random things, like a MAGA hat. Why was why is a MAGA hat suddenly racist? I was trying to have a conversation with somebody the other day in California, and I said, okay, tell me why this president is, in your opinion, so racist or homophobic or whatever. And she's like, I don't even want to get into that. Yeah. And I said, well, just tell me. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Well, yeah, just tell what me. normally happens. Yeah. There, there was no argument yeah. that was there. It's weird in the UK. Like, so many people think I'm some kind of, like, uh, Trump apologist, if not Trump supporter, which is, you know, I, I'm pretty... I'm fairly ambivalent, you know, there's stuff he's done and said, which I like and don't like, just as sure. goes with pretty much any human or any politician. And it's just weird because I just try to be sane and objective, right? You know, I just try to be honest and fair and not just yeah. go with what people want me to say or think I should say or what someone has told me to say. I just try to like look at this from a normal, rational perspective. Yeah. And just by dint of doing that, People jump to like these huge. Oh, why are you? Why are you defending him? All he's a, and you're kind of like, I'm just. I'm the one here who's being reasonable and rational. Yeah. If like you said, that person there. If you're not even willing to have a conversation or give me one or two examples of what you're claiming, right? If someone, if someone is saying, oh, that person is that person is racist. That person is this. That person is that. And and someone says, why? Yeah. Or what's your evidence for that? You have to be able to come with something i would think so you know you, you can't you can't just point at someone and say that they're whatever negative thing it is especially if it's something that's got as much weight yeah. as it is that and then just say oh well it's obvious it's like that's not that's not an argument yeah if it's that obvious i mean I, i'm a black guy right needless to say i had no idea right? if if it's that obvious <laughs> well i do i do i do switch my identity from time to time yeah well depending on what suits me yeah um so yeah it's like if it were that obvious i'd be in agreement with you here you, right. you see what i mean but if it's like you're just grasping it grasping at straws or you have to rep misrepresent something yeah. that was said or omit something for that to be the evidence then i'm kind of like well this isn't working for me here you know yeah. i i'm a big fan of like genuine justice you know i don't like to see people being unfairly called things that they're not mm -hmm. i don't like to see people being unfairly accused of things that they didn't do like that just in terms of my personal principles and values that just yeah annoys me right it upsets me so when i see that happening even if it's with somebody i don't i don't like or i don't agree with or whatever there's tons of people out there i don't i don't agree with but if someone were to say oh they're something that they're not i'd be like no you, you, no let's not do that yeah let's, let's not say that that's not it's yeah. not cool that's not fair if i accuse you of wearing a red shirt and you go i'm not wearing a red shirt i can show you a picture <laughs> of you wearing the red shirt there's evidence of that right this shirt, look like at that, that oz style brands and i'm wearing an oz watch right hey, here look at that zuby zuby came from the uk bearing gifts i did come that bearing is gifts. beautiful yeah, thank you. isn't it man oh yeah, my that's gosh. from uh, one of my podcast sponsors yeah. OZ lifestyle brands zuby podcast y'all gotta make sure you're getting that thing so you talk about you said you said i'm not crazy let me tell you how crazy this guy is <laughs> tell you what he did and you want to know how to grow Twitter? Zuby, tell them what you did. Tell them what you did, Zuby. Okay, okay. Party time, Mom. Okay. Uh, Topless so, photos. <laughs> February 26th, um, I posted a tweet saying that I keep hearing how there's no biological strength advantage that men have over women. So uh, watch me destroy the British women's deadlift record without trying. So I posted a clip from one of my training sessions of me deadlifting 230 kilos, which I think is about 510 pounds or so, yeah. roughly. Um, about a hundred pounds less than my max, I must say. And, uh, but it was enough to beat the British women's deadlift record in my mm -hmm. weight class. And then I wrote at the bottom, oh, I identified as a woman while lifting the weight. Don't be a bigot. The video <laughs> went on to get do 7 million impressions on Twitter, 2 million views, tens of thousands of likes and retweets. And it, yes, this was like six months ago now. Yeah. And the fallout from it is still, uh. Is still it. going on but i think what's great is because i'd planted so many seeds in my career in the past i think that caught a lot of people's attention yeah but people then stayed because they realized that there's more to me than a, just a one satirical tweet yeah so a lot of people saw that that kind of brought them into the world and then they they stuck around because they saw that there was more going on yeah they fell in love with it real quick yeah. fell in love with you because it, it, that was that was the attention getter yeah and we'll throw the clip up here but let me tell you <laughs> so funny dude because 
I saw this thing and I'm like, I love this dude. I love him. <laughs> like, don't be a bigot. I'm like, yeah, that's the whole deal. I mean, you're going to accuse us of judging you. 30 seconds, you were a woman. Did you get a period? Did you, did you, um, any of that? Did you get mood swings? Did you feel the need to make a sandwich, wash a dish? I'm Anything? Right here. <laughs> I'm right here. Shut up, Sarah. <laughs> we thought you went to make sandwiches. Shut up, Sarah. Sarah, you better be on that computer looking up recipes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see what Sarah can deadlift? She's going to deadlift me because she's about to kill me. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Got so, my eye on you. I know you do. You're always <laughs> looking. Sweet, this sweet country apple. Yeah. Like a, like a Granny Smith. That yeah. is. Should, that's, should, should, I, so, should I give you all some space? So, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> You're going to spar off. To whip I, his behind, I got, yes. Sarah, I got man strength, woman. Do you? Yeah, I got man strength somewhere. I got both. I love what, yeah, there you go. <laughs> He's got woman strength and man strength. But I love I love one of the tweets he did just here in the last few days where you said, let's take some let's take muscle mass from the real muscular guys <laughs> and give it to the weak guys and let's evenly distribute muscle mass yeah. so everybody will be equal. Yeah. That ain't how the world works, is well, it? I, I, that was actually just a couple hours ago because I it? saw, uh, yeah, I – I can't remember because I'd posted some just some stuff about going to the gym and training, yeah, and how to how to maintain your your strength and fitness, especially if you're on the road and traveling like I am right now. And um, someone sent me a link to an article that was in uh, the Guardian in the UK, where what was the oh, the headline was amazing. It was something like um, it was basically about how people who go to the gym and work out mm -hmm. are more likely to be right wing. And how it turns people right wing. So it was like an opinion piece, My and it God. was it was re it was very very funny. So I, I kind of tweeted a caption from it, and then um, uh, yeah, I kind of went into troll mode as I do next, sometimes. Next thing, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then um, because yesterday I'd had lots of people arguing with me about you know whether or not the the whole should billionaires be able to exist com conversation. So I was talking about how Jeff Bezos, you know has made life better for a billion people, employs 650,000 people. Yeah. He's done this, he's done that. And I was like, yeah, I think he should probably have even more than 110 billion. Mm -hmm. And that upset some people. So I kind of got in that conversation. So I was still in that mind frame. So I sort of wanted to apply that to something else. So I was suggesting, yeah, we find the biggest, strongest men and women, and we you know, take some of their muscle mass. and We uh, redistribute this equally so that we have equality of outcome. Yeah, you got to share Everyone's it. Happy. Yeah, we got to sh share it around. You do, you've written and you, I mean, you're an author, you've done all these things on fitness and I, I can just see the tweet coming soon, the headline that gym memberships are a sign of white supremacy. Like I, like I can just see because, you know, the black community can't afford a gym membership. So I've if you're seen <laughs> an article talking about the dangerous link between powerlifting and white supremacy. Wow. Seen that article. That was a real article. That's amazing to me. What do you think contributes to just the pure? Because I look at this, you look at this. It's idiocy. It's I mean, it's, it's just insane. pure idiocy. It's insane. I mean, what? Where? Where did people just begin to lose their minds? Mm, mm. Uh, a lot of it stemmed from certain fields of academia. A lot of the seeds were planted many decades ago, mm -hmm. but they've really started popping up and coming to fruition and infecting every sector of modern life in the past, I want to say five to seven years. Mm -hmm. um, how the infection has happened has been kind of weird. I mean, I, I literally view it as some kind of virus because it does infect yeah. everything. It can inf infect the corporate world, science, the medical world, entertainment, just everything. People just start viewing everything through some kind of lens of intersectionality or identity politics, and it gets into absolutely mm -hmm. everything to the stage that there'll be someone who's watching this right now or someone would come into this room and they'll be counting up how many men and women are and you know what what skin color everybody is mm -hmm. and trying to do some weird mathematics in their head to work out whether or not this is a fairly diverse room mm -hmm. and seeing how you're speaking to me and how I'm speaking to you and you know where where it comes from is uh I, I think that's that's quite a long story but in terms of where it is now I mean I just think it's a gigantic step backwards yeah the gigantic step backwards that's not the way I grew up, that's not the way I was raised, that's not how I view people, view the world. I think it's a very sad way to view everything through that lens. And once people start it, it you know, they, they start seeing things that don't exist yeah. in a way, or they start interpreting things through this filter so that no matter what they're looking at, 
it becomes racialized or it becomes some yeah. kind of battle of the sexes or it becomes some weird sort of power hierarchy and they just can't see anything outside of that lens whereas most normal people are just like you exactly what are you angry about what are you talking about you remember that movie outbreak when that dude uh brought that monkey back on the plane and it bit him or something like that in the pet store and then it came back and everybody died on the world you know on the planet you know except for dustin hoffman and renee russo yes isn't that right yeah that's that's what that's what this social justice garbage is it's mm -hmm. like somebody brought a monkey on the plane and they got infected. I love that you said that. It is like a virus, and it's, it just spreads. And now it's like, who can out-virus one another? Mm -hmm. Like, mine's worse than yours. Like, I got it worse than yours. My rash is bigger than yours. And it gets into everything. You know, I, I'm a I'm a musician. I'm mm -hmm. a professional artist. It's it's heavily in the music and entertainment world, yeah. which is one of the reasons I started becoming a little more vocal about certain things, because I started noticing things where I was just like, mm -hmm. what's going on here, and why isn't anyone else noticing it or trying to counter it in some way, shape, or form. I mean, yeah. there was a, for example, there was a music festival that I wanted to apply, apply to perform at uh, last year, and they weren't taking applications from male artists because they were trying to reach some sort of 50-50 gender equality on the Yeah, even on the if the girls the sucked. Yeah, it doesn't matter, right? And I, I'm a rapper. <laughs> look, look, look I, I'm a rapper. Yeah. You know, yeah. hip-hop is... I would honestly say, if I had to estimate, I'd say it's about 15 to 1 male to of female course it is. rappers. So why would you expect a hip-hop festival's lineup or heavy metal or EDM or any of those genres? Why would you expect it to be 50-50 on the output side when the inputs going in right. are not even 50-50? And you know, and then beyond that, there's a whole bunch of other questions. Then you've had things like music festivals charging people different ticket prices depending on their skin color. You've had... Um, and, then, and then on the flip side... I've also filled out forms where I'm able to identify as whatever, not only whatever gender I want on the form, but also whatever ethnicity I want. So they, I've filled out applications where I could have just said, "Yeah, I'm a I'm a Native American woman." Yeah. And well, we have someone well running for president who did that. I know, I yeah. know. Um, and I'm just seeing this stuff, and I'm kind of like, "What's going? What's yeah. going on here? And why isn't anyone?" Saying, and at, I've spoken to a whole bunch of different people, you know, sure. um, working in all different kinds of fields. And it sounds like no, nobody is safe, whether you work in whether you work in tech or in or yeah. in engineering or in academia. Some places are worse than others, but it's just this push, push, push. And people I think the vast majority of people think it's silly. and Lots of the stuff doesn't make sense. Oh, I, think, I think the mass do. And, and that's the thing. Something gets paraded out there. Some headline, you know, some college professor says, well, white statues are signs of racism because back, you know, the Romans, they would put it in white marble and mm. stuff like that because that, they wanted to show that the white race was superior. I'm like, you're reaching mm. so much on this stuff. and But these are the true headlines that, that you see. Um, and it goes from not only an identity cleansing or a gender cleansing or a racial cleansing, all the way down to things like in the college or the university setting where, hey, if you don't like your grade, will you tell me what you think it should be mm -hmm. and we'll make it that. It's it's absolutely ludicrous. I mean, I'm a dude. <laughs> I'm a dude, man. Of course. I don't know what else to be. There, there, there's someone watching this right now saying that the only reason you're saying everything you're doing is because you're a straight privileged white man. So exactly. You can't, you can't say cis hetero. And, yeah, it's it's whatever. gone from who from what are you saying to who is saying it. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. So, oh, I get know? it all the time because I wear the hat. I wear I wear the hat for one reason, <laughs> just to piss people off, man. You know, yeah, this is a culture and world I came out of. But I wear the hat just so people will go, oh, yeah, it's a white dude in a cowboy hat named Chad. Of course he's got to <laughs> say it. What a <laughs> dish. Like, whatever. <laughs> hey, Mark Hamill, still a crappy actor. Still a crappy actor, Star Wars fans. Um, and uh, I caught a lot of hell on that one this I week. I know. I know. <laughs> but... See, I understand what you, you, mm. you guys in the UK, I know what y'all want. I know what y'all want. I really do. Y'all want America to implode and fail so y'all can get this place back. <laughs> See, that's the deal. Y'all, this is a mass conspiracy going on. <laughs> no, seriously, Zuby, did you know, you brought up a good point. Do you know that my passport, I've had it for nine years now, so I've got to renew it in another, in another year. Mm. My passport for the last nine years has said I'm a female, and I've never corrected it. For real? Yeah. It says I'm a female. <laughs> No, I travel out of the country never all the questioned. time. <laughs> travel out of the country it all does, the time. Does it bother you that no one ever questions that? <laughs> no one questions it. No one's looked. Man, so and you've had that since like 20, 2010. Yeah, man, you were on this before everybody else was. Yeah, 
And I'm waiting for somebody to say something because how can you I, – I can identify. Yeah. You need to do a video of that next time you travel well, as soon as I get, overseas. I'm waiting. I'm going to cover the passport deal, the number up, obviously, to protect the identity. But, yeah, I've been waiting to do something like that because – you know, you go in and nowadays, depending on what country you're going into, you go through the customs, you put your passport in and it prints out basically a large print piece of paper of mm. what information is on your passport. There's a big old F right there. Very funny. It also says I was born in uh, New Mexico. I wasn't. I was born in New Jersey. So, you know. Are you sure you have your passport? Do you maybe <laughs> saw somebody else's? Yeah, was this on purpose or they just no, screwed, they they messed just it screwed up. up that bad? They messed it up. That's not shocking. That, that ought to tell you. Bureaucracy at its finest. Welcome to America. That is fine. But yes, said for the last nine years, and I travel out of the country all the time. Yeah. And I've just quit worrying about it. And and no one in any other country has even never. thought. Oh. They've never I'm like, you guys are really checking things out. Yeah. You know, knock on knock on something. They'll probably do it next time. But yeah, yeah. you know, there's been some countries I'll be okay just to get trapped in. Uh, and then some, some of them I kind of want to come home from. Yeah, that's fair enough. You know, what, what we were just talking about, though, with um, this sort of social justice virus is what's interesting as well is how unique it is, not just to the modern West, but largely, I think, even to the Anglosphere, mm -hmm. right? UK, US, Canada, Australia, the English-speaking yeah. Western countries are the ones that really seem to have caught this, caught this disease to the extent that they have. I mean, if, if you go... I mean, obviously, I, I grew up in the Middle East. I grew up in Saudi Arabia. My family background's originally from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If you go to those countries or probably anywhere in Africa, lots of places in South America, and you talk about... I mean, I was saying, I was the other day, I was trying to explain my viral deadlift tweet to one of my aunties uh, who lives in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Right? If I go back to Nigeria and I try to explain to people why that thing went viral... It, you will just get a blank look because yeah. none of the context makes any sense. No level of it makes sense. If you, if I say, "Oh, I identified as woman," though, look at me like, "Yeah, wait, what? What do you? <laughs> what, what do you mean? What are you talking about?" If I say, "Oh, well, there's this thing happening in in the states and in the UK where you've got um, biological men competing against bio," they'll, they'll be, wait, like, no aspect of it makes any sense to them. Right. They just look at you like, are you, "Are you okay? Like, what are you?" What are you talking about? Like yeah. a man's not a woman, a woman's not a man. So yeah. What? Whereas if I show it to people here, they're like, "Oh, dude, that's funny." Yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they it, see it. Yeah, so it's it's just weird. You've got that sort of divergence where it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's, I've tried to explain that to people, mm -hmm. and everybody here they've they've heard it till I'm blue in the face. But I spend a lot of time in third world countries, a lot of time in Nigeria, and so I have a perspective that a lot of people Americans don't have because you know Mark Twain paraphrasing said, "Nothing destroys." prejudice like travel and nothing mm. destroys travel like prejudice mm. and so when you travel the world you realize that people are different but they're also the same but you go these places and you're like most of the world ain't dealing with the dumb crap we're trying to make up to be upset about no 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 and you know they're not you know they're not obsessing over um diversity and intersectionality yeah. and having perfect proportional representation and outcome and absolutely you know people are just trying to I know I do believe that when countries get too comfortable, or when a society gets too comfortable, you start looking for problems and making mm -hmm. them up where they don't really exist. You know, yeah. I mean, I know people like to talk about the USA and the UK as countries which are, you know, some people think they're these these terrible countries where there's all this awful racism and bigotry or sexism or whatever, homophobia, or whatever. It's, I'm like, yeah. what are you comparing to? Exactly. You're not comparing to history, clearly, and no. you're also not comparing to the rest of the world, clearly. Yeah. Right? What, you know, it, does it mean that everything's perfect and nothing can be better? No, I'm not saying that. But have some perspective here. Like, yeah, what, go what to Brunei. What if you, you think we hate about? gays in America, go to Brunei. <laughs> it, it's, go it's go to some of these countries where they'll it, kill you. Yeah, it, it's, it, it, blow, it blows my mind. It really blows my mind sometimes. Um, and, yeah, like I said, I mean... Yeah, I don't know where we go with it all. I think the pendulum is going to start swinging back soon. I think it might need to get a little bit crazier Yeah. before kind of people collectively yeah. are just like, okay, this is this is really going too far now. I mean, yeah. you're, you're, you've got a lot of people now who are starting to dissent and talk about it. Yeah. Even, if, even if it's in whis whispered tones, you're getting a lot of people who are like, okay, this is, this is a bit silly or this doesn't make sense or this right. isn't fair. And I think that it'll get pushed so far that yeah, I do think the once the average person, you know, the kind of, I don't know, the normal person who's got, got a normal job and is 
just trying to work and feed them. When, when it starts like affecting, when, I think when they start seeing it affect them, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's true. I think when, it, when they start seeing it affect them or people around them, I think that's when they'll be like, okay, this thing has. Well, we have a lot of folks who have come on this show who were self avowed very far on the left, mm. and then all of a sudden they got devoured by the left. Yep. And now they're, they're, they realized mm. their pendulums yeah. swung back. Yeah. Well, it's a circular firing squad. So. It really is. You know, do you think do you think doing what we do, you and me, and various others who go online and just kind of keep poking that bear a little bit, are we good? Are we doing the right thing in that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Especially when you poke holes in the logic. That's yeah. why the deadlift tweet blew up mm-hmm. because it was a checkmate move, right? Because there's nobody anything can say opposing that that mm-hmm. won't make them look hypocritical. Yeah. If someone says, "Hey, you're not really a woman," <laughs> how how dare you? I identified. As a woman, you've been telling me, you've been telling us for years that a woman is anybody who identifies as a woman. So mm-hmm. you can't just say, even if you don't think I'm genuine, you can't just say that, you know, you don't know me. So mm-hmm. you can't say that. And you've got the concept of gender fluidity, too. So I don't even need to be a woman all the time. Yeah. I could have just been a woman while I was lifting that weight. So I'm just saying, here, look, this is your logic. Deal with it. And people don't know what to do. Right. They'll, they can try to say that you're you're hateful or you're you're mean or you're this or you're that. and i'm like no i'm not yeah so you can and say no this and you're no. not yeah yeah, no. yeah. you know I, I know who i am people can throw things at me i'm like look i'm very confident in who i am people who know me generally like me so i'm not a, exactly I know, I know i don't have any hate in my heart for any individual no group so i'm just pointing out the flawed logic and where this thing leads to yeah. um and it's, it was very clear. I had a video. This is this is just showing it. Just to, yeah, I don't know if you saw the. You know they did the mixed, um, the mixed relays. Mm. They're doing. They're doing. What's the athletics competition that's going on right now? They had some. Mixed, You're looking at they, totally the wrong okay, people. They, the they, absolute they a, worst uh, possible excuse group you. of people. They had a to mixed ask. relay yesterday or today, and it there's a video clip which is just going around today right now, and on the final leg. It's basically got the, um, so the, there's a Polish runner. She's the fourth out of fourth runner. It's right. the 400 meter hurdles relay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there are six countries racing, I think. And the Polish runner, female runner, who I'm sure is brilliant and one of the best in the world for a woman. Um, the she, women are good at holding yeah, the baton. Yeah, of course. She, she, she gets a seven second Again, head start. Again, I'm right here. She gets a seven second head start in the lead. And every single one of the guys fit crosses the line before her. And this is where I'm just like, you know, for these people saying that there's no, there's no speed or strength difference. So you're yeah. just like, wh- smoke your wh- ass. What are Look you, at it. What, yeah, it's like, right this, there in yeah, front of it's, you. It's here. This, this is not just talking theoretically. Like yeah. this is it. Yeah. This is it. You know, and we've, we've known this for many, we've known this for years. Why are the sports divided to begin with? Yeah. It's not rocket science and it's deeply unfair. And it's even funnier because it's women who it's going to affect. Yeah. Right. So you'll have these people claiming to be feminists or be pro women or whatever. And I'm like, I'm, I have my massive criticisms of feminism, but I'm being, I'm the one who's talking up for women here. Exactly. This is not going to affect men having, you know, if you're going to have. It's women who are going to get yeah, victimized. It's women, it's women who are going to be pushed out of their own sports and spaces. And I'm like, this is. I don't know. At some points, I just kind of put my hands up. I'm like, right. okay, like let this thing run its course. Just and let people be stupid. See what happens. Yeah. The left has thrown women to the wayside in in favor of transgenders. Yeah, mm. it's just like they've thrown blacks to the wayside in the American communities for in Hispanics. Favor of mm. Illegals. Illegals. Yeah. Exactly. Same thing. We got to get out of here. At Zuby Music on Twitter, ZubyMusic.com. That's right. Yeah. Go to check him out. Incredibly talented. Incredibly funny. Insightful. So much wisdom, so much common sense. I love you, man. I appreciate, appreciate you. Thank you for coming on the show. By the way, this show, today's episode, is been hosted by all women. Uh, this edition of the Chad Prather Show, this is technically the view right here. This is the conservative view. You're a woman, I'm a woman. For the next 15 seconds, we're women. Thank you for tuning in. Go to where podcasts are offered and uh, leave us a rating and a review. We only identify as a five-star a podcast so that's all you can leave and we only take positive reviews so there you go folks we identify as higher up in the rankings where podcasts are offered so zuby thanks for coming on brother safe travels thanks for the watch and he gave me a wallet too man zuby go check out <laughs> hostile brands i love it i love y'all god bless you we'll talk to you next time bye <laughs>
Thank you.